Good evening, everybody. I, oh, there we go. I was going to say, I don't know what's happened to my light, but it's fixed itself. Um, first of all, massive thank you to everybody for all the encouragement and support over the last week or so. To everybody who's written to Luke, who's emailed them, thank you so much. Um, I decided to make a live stream today because I'm going to be going offline after this for a couple of weeks. There's there's a huge amount to be done in the background and I'm going to have to concentrate on that for now. Um, so that's why I decided to do tonight's live. I knew you'd all want to know what's happening first and foremost with Luke. Um, he still hasn't had his calls reinstated, but in the last few days, the prison accepted and confirmed some virtual visits, so video calls, and then cancelled them. Some of them were only about 24 hours notice. And they said that these people could have in-person visits, actually go out to the prison rather than have virtual calls. If they thought that was going to make things more difficult or, or mess with Luke's head or whatever, they were sadly mistaken because these people just got in their cars the following day and went out to the prison to see him anyway. So he's had at least two face-to-face -face visits in the last few days. Um, but his phone calls and his, his video calls are still, still haven't been reinstated. But he got to see people in the flesh. So um, that's got to be good news of some description. You remember the, the, um, the reason for all this in the first place was that the, the um, recordings for the four part series were unlawful and yada yada yada. I think the sun, it was a couple of people who sent me, uh, I think it was the sun today, making exactly that claim. Yeah, but they're still up on YouTube and they're still being shared all over the place. I hardly think if they were unlawful, they'd still be up a week and a bit later. So yeah, make of that as you will. Now, remember when they were talking about Luke's home visits and they said they didn't know how the neighbours would react. And Luke said, well, what are you going to do? Go and ask them all. It turns out, I have a text here from Corinne, and it turns out that's exactly what they could have done. I, I wanted to put a screenshot of this up, but I couldn't figure out how to do it on a live. On a live. So I'll put a screenshot out later on, on social media. So this is from Corinne. Great. Most of my neighbours know who I am and all, without exception, support Luke. I told Luke's so social worker and added that they wouldn't have a clue it was him anyway. He, the social worker, just got really angry with me. I'm going to tell you what she said at the end of it as well. She said they're all looking at it, every level. So it turns out they could, in fact, just have gone and asked the neighbours. And we all know why they didn't, don't we? Um, oh, yeah, the son today as well has repeated this um, extra three years for failing a drug test. So this is getting boring now, but I'm just going to repeat again. The three years that we were talking about are the two years that Greenock wasted. The two years where he should have been getting his community access and his first grant of temporary release and working in the community before he went up to open conditions. So they wasted that. But then on top of that, Greenock was taking 12 to 18 months to process first grant applications whereas they're supposed to take 12 to 16 weeks. So that 12 to 18 months would have taken, look, even if they were to start again now, if they, if they were to take him back to Greenwich now, today, he'd still have that two years to catch up and he'd still have that 12 to 18 months wait because Greenwich takes so long to process these applications. So nothing to do with a failed drug test. These tabloids are just unbelievable. They just keep repeating the same old stuff, no matter how often they're corrected. But we'll keep correcting them. Of course we will. Um, now, yeah, the, there's 
uh, quite a bit of, um, how do I put this, new information that's appeared, I believe, on Twitter in the last week or so. I'm, I'm rubbish at Twitter. I can't find my way around it, but people send me stuff. And these are, these are new claims um, about the case that are basically unfounded. And I just wanted to say, please be careful if you're sharing stuff that other people have shared. Try and check out where it's coming from. Uh, I have seen, what have I seen? Um, several claims that Jody was raped. As if the situation isn't bad enough. Several claims that Jody was raped. There is nothing to suggest she was. Now, that's not to say that it wasn't a sexually motivated attack. But they are two different things. Uh, another one that said uh, the, the search trio changed their stories within 24 hours of finding Jodie's body. Now, I meant, I meant to go back and check the documents, um, but I've not had a chance yet. Um, there's a couple of problems with that. First of all, they didn't. They didn't change their stories within 24 hours. We know that. We've got all the statements for the first month and they're all saying the same thing and then they start to change. Um, secondly, from memory, there were no st statements taken the day after. So we had the statements that were taken at the time and then I can't remember, two or three days later, they started taking proper statements um, after that. So, so they didn't go back to them within 24 hours and get another statement that was different from the, the first statement. So... Another one um, that, that Turnbull and Dobby were in Judith's house the night of the murder. Well, in that case, Dobby now has one of Luke's superhero skills of being in two places at the same time. Because we have the time that um, Jodie's mum and her stepdad were released from the police station to back to the house. And we know where Dobby was and we know who he was with. And they're two different places. So just please, please be careful. Um, what we need to be careful about now, we've worked really, really hard to keep to the facts, keep to what we can back up and, and avoid wild speculation. Because then that turns us into um, as bad as mainstream media, really. So just please be careful with stuff that you see popping up and and if you're not sure about it don't share it all right now the yes who's that melody lee fact check everything yeah um the samples the day this all kicked off with luke's a week past thursday he'd received the letter saying that the samples were no longer with police scotland that they'd been moved to the Scottish Police Authority. Now, the difficulty we have with that is that the undertaking not to do anything with the remaining samples was with Police Scotland, not with the Scottish Police Authority. And we found out where they are and we found out who's got them, who's in control of them. So there's a letter from Luke's solicitor off saying, do not touch them. The, the, the problem is they have gone to a forensic lab. If they test them, what's left? That could mean there's not enough material left for our side, for our scientists to test what remains. So we can only hope right now that we got that letter in in time to stop them doing anything else. Simply because an undertaking was with um, Police Scotland and not uh, the Scottish Police Authority. So that's that remains to be seen. Um, we need to wait and see what they come back with from that letter. Um, it would be beyond coincidental if that lab started carrying out tests and tried to claim that either they didn't know about an undertaking not to do anything with them or that the undertaking was not with them. <clears throat> but we do need to wait 
and, and see what the outcome is from that. Um, how's this case not getting reopened? Well, I think it's obvious why it's not getting reopened. It's all out. It's all out. And they're trying to shove it back in. They want it all to go away. It's going nowhere. It's going absolutely nowhere. Um, and, and we'll just keep bringing the stuff out. Like the treatment look with the, yeah, you can have video calls. Oh, did they say you could have them? No, you can't. As if they haven't done enough to them already. Or the, oh, right. Oh, these samples, you mean? They, they better not. They better not. Now, there was a couple of things that I wanted to talk about prior to this all kicking off, and I never got around to it because once this started, there was no time for it. So we're going to go back a little bit to some other stuff, and then I'll bring us back up to present day. Um, oh, can you hear me okay, everybody? Somebody's got, somebody's got difficulties with the signal breaking up. I, uh, sorry, I don't, I don't know what would be causing that. Um, yeah. Oh, cool. Oh, some people are breaking up and some people are saying it's fine. Sorry, guys. It's the internet and it's live. <laughs> right, so, so going back, um, you remember the appeal document that, that people are so people who think Luke's guilty are so fond of quoting as you know, chapter and verse on the case. And in the appeal document, the judges said that the search trio left from Jodie's mother's house just a few minutes from the top of the path. All of their statements say, no, they didn't. They left from my granny's house 20 minutes walk away. And I said at the time, if they left from her mother's house, that would explain how they got to the path so quickly because it is just a couple of minutes walk away. And then somebody else came back and said, well, wait a minute. If John Ferris said he saw the search trio leaving the granny's house at 11 o'clock, was he lying if they left from her mum's house some, sometime before 11 o'clock? And like so much in this case, yes and no. There's a nugget of truth in a lot of the stuff, and then it's just flipped until it becomes something else. So we now have further information about Ferris's movements that night. We actually have further information about both Ferris and Dickie. I'll come to that in a minute. Um, but we know that, that Ferris was not where he said he was, when he said he was. Okay. It is entirely possible that he saw the search trio leaving from Alice Walker's house but prior to the time he said he did, based on this new information. Now, that being the case, we're back to the same old problem. Why were they starting to go looking for Jodie when she wasn't missing yet? Uh, and then the judge is making that terrible mistake about them leaving for Jodie's mum's house to be there before 11 o'clock. It's, it's worrying, it's definitely worrying. And these are questions that, that need to be answered. Um, so yes, Ferris lied. Whichever way you look at it, he lied. But I mean, he lied all the way through it anyway. Um, but the big lie, where were Ferris and Dickie when the bike was propped against the wall without them? Does anybody want to hazard a guess? Yeah, over the wall. Over the wall. So they both lied. They both lied on the stand. It wasn't that they couldn't remember where they were, they knew exactly where they were. But that then raises another question. If they were over the wall at 5.15 and the bike was propped against the wall at 5.15, they admitted that themselves. If they were over the wall at 5.15, Either they saw something or they saw nothing. And if they saw nothing, that means Jody wasn't there at 5.15 and the prosecution's time of day cannot stand. Interesting. We'll be following that one up 
is about as much as I can say about that right now. Um, oh yeah, the other lie that um, Ferris was supposed to be going back to meet to Joseph's house at six o'clock, all connected with the cannabis nonsense. No, we we now we now know that time was incorrect as well, and it was actually nearer five o'clock. So so now we have shifts in sands. Now we have shifts in sands. People are slipping up. People are letting things out, or or they've forgotten what they said in the first instance, and that they're telling the actual truth now. That will continue to chip away, chip away, chip away until we get the truth. Um, yeah, the New Bell High School had CCTV cameras, seven of them. And in the um, destruction notification list thing, there, there's a bit that says the images were captured from these cameras. Now, bear in mind, the back of New Battle High School overlooks the crime scene, and the side and front overlook potential escape routes that could have you know, captured people running away or, or behaving suspiciously or whatever. And those, those cameras, images from were taken. The defence have never seen them. They were never released to the defence. The problem is we will now never know what was on them because they've been destroyed. Why were those images not released to the defence, given that they, they cover so many areas so close to the murder scene? And they're looking for a lady pushing a buggy and a couple of guys with a broken down car. And what did they see in the grounds of the school and behind the school on those cameras? We'll never know. It's, it's just, it's outrageous. Um, one more thing. So, so there's been, this, this claim has been made more times than, than I can count. And I don't know where it comes from. Um, but there's a claim that there's been a gagging notice, gagging notice um, put on us by Luke's brother and his dad. <laughs> absolute nonsense. It's absolute unadulterated garbage that has never been such a thing. Um, it's, it's not, it doesn't exist. But I just thought I'd mention it because it, it gets repeated with, with monotonous regularity. Um, okay, now, the next protest. We are looking at Glasgow in July, and a lot of you have seen we've got polls out on the various groups looking to see who can attend on which dates. Uh, we haven't we haven't got final numbers yet for, for the various dates. As soon as we have them, we will, the, the teams will roll them out and everybody will know where and when. But it will be in July and it will be in Glasgow. Probably George Square. And I know a lot of people have said, why don't we, why don't we do you know, the SPS headquarters, why don't we do, um, I don't know, police headquarters or places like that. And we will, we will in time. For now, what we're trying to do is is get people looking at the case, people that don't know about it, people that maybe maybe still think Luke's guilty because that's what was in the papers all those years ago. We need to build numbers. I said this last time, you know, we need big numbers and we need to keep pushing. The um, the push on the petition has been amazing um, in the last week. It's amazing to see it's, it's over the 28,000 and, and still on the rise. So that is fantastic as well. Um, I'm going to go on to the buy me a coffee. But before I do, I want to talk about another claim that, that pops up every now and again. And that's that I was involved with a charity. Um, that was shut down for failing to put in accounts or returns or something like that. Um, 
again, entirely not true. I was involved with a charity years ago when it first started up. But in the end, it was too much trying to deal with the charity and deal with the, the work. And it was actually it was starting to affect my health. And so I did the obvious thing and stepped down. But at no point in all of that did I have any um, connection or influence to accounts, money, funds, anything like that. Nothing to do with it. So if any of you see that one, now you know. Now you know the truth about that as well. Okay, the buy me a coffee. Guys, you have been absolutely incredible. Thank you so much. This this work does not come free. Um, the the some of the expenses connected to it can be quite substantial. And we it helps to keep things going at the sort of rate we need to keep them going. So so every coffee helps keep things moving forward. Um, it, it's one of the reasons that I'm, I'm going off offline for the next few weeks is because I need to just get my head down on a lot of the stuff that, that we need that needs doing behind the scenes. And again, I've come to the place where I can't I can't do it all. Yeah, you know, I can't do all of that and do all the online stuff. So I'm going to take a couple of weeks out to concentrate on that stuff um, to get everything where it needs to be. And then I'll be back in a few weeks. So I just wanted to say a massive thank you to everybody. It's, it, you've been so generous and it is really, really massive, <laughs> excuse me, massively appreciated. So that's our updates for this week. Uh, over to you guys, questions. Christina, it's crazy the amount of new people on TikTok who all say their eyes have been opened wide and they all believe the papers because they didn't look mo more into it. But now Luke's got an army. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the importance of all the different platforms and all the different um, groups working together. It's, it's incredible to see all the, the cross-referencing and the checking in with each other and all of that um, to, to just keep getting new people to understand that what they were told was not true. And, and especially that if this could happen to Luke, it could happen to anybody. I have seen the other families that it's happened to. And, and most people just don't believe it could ever happen to them until it does. So yeah, thanks for that, Christina. Thanks for um, Christina and, and Louise on TikTok doing a fantastic job there. Um, Catherine will get that arranged ASAP uh, is Corinne okay yeah Corinne's Corinne's as well as she possibly can be um obviously Luke didn't need all of this Corinne didn't need all of this but they don't care about that they, they don't care about that they don't see them as as human beings they, they, I've said it before, these people have no humanity. Um, when will we hear back about the samples, Emma? I don't know. I hope early in the coming week. Um, obviously, as soon as we know, I'll, I'll put that out so that everybody knows. Um, but I'll have to put it out via the groups because if I come back on and, and start getting involved online again, it runs away with so much time. So as soon as we have that back, I will, I'll come on and let everybody know. Um, Constantine the Crab, I stopped buying the daily record the day they put it on the front page. Wasn't that illegal of them? No, actually it wasn't. Um, back then, it was a guideline that they shouldn't put, they shouldn't picture and name minors, which Luke was at the time. But the argument was that there were no proceedings against him because he hadn't been arrested. So they were free. They didn't arrest him till nine and a half months later. So, so they were free to name and photograph him, even though he was only 15. So they didn't break any laws. They broke guidelines. And this is the same excuse that the police used for, for no identity period. Oh, it was only guidelines. Well... Yeah, why are the guidelines there in the first place? 
I wonder. Oh, that was that was another thing. Um, I was going to say one of the a couple of the, the papers that ran the story about Luke um, being out in shopping centres among unsuspecting public. Yeah. Do you know who else is out among unsuspecting public? And has been for the last 20 years. The person who actually killed Jodie. That's who's been out in the unsuspecting public. And I've said before, you could be standing next to them at a bus stop, you could be standing next to them in a shop, and you wouldn't know. That's a terrifying thought. And yet, the tabloids, oh, a prisoner who's had 18 and a half years absolutely blemish-free is following the process that is allowed for reintegration. And we should be up in arms because he's out among, amongst unsuspecting public. No, what we should be up in arms about is that the person or persons who killed Jody has been among us for nearly 20 years, 20 years at the end of this week. That's what we should be up in arms about. Uh, what have we got? And he could kill again, and Luke is paying for him. Yeah, yeah. And they don't seem to care. They, I mean, I've said so many times the um, Rachel Nicole case, absolutely tragic. But because the police focused on the wrong guy in the Rachel Nicole case, the real killer, Robert Napper, went into the house of Samantha and Jasmine Bissett. Uh, Jasmine was. Four, I believe, and murdered them in their own home. Now, if they hadn't focused on the wrong guy in the first place, this guy, Robert Napper, was in their system. He was flagged up for rapes and all sorts in their system, and they didn't even look at him because they'd become so convinced that Colin Stagg was the man <laughs> until they discovered he wasn't. If you were Samantha and Jasmine's family, how would you feel knowing that need never happened? It should never have happened. Of course, it should never have happened. It should never have happened to um, Rachel either. But Samantha and Jasmine could have been saved if they'd not gone after the wrong guy. So it's something to think about. Uh, What are we looking at here? The persons involved need brought to justice. The police knew for a fact it wasn't Luke. They made him a scapegoat and they made him a scapegoat. Yeah, they did. They did. Um, why they did that? Matter of speculation. Was it just because they ran off straight from the off after the wrong guy and destroyed all the evidence and, and destroyed all the, the crime scene and let everything else go cold and had no way of backtracking or was it something else again we might never know um i've seen all sorts of suggestions and you know wild theories about why they had to go after luke and not anybody else it could be as simple as yeah they they had some wrong information at the beginning and it made Luke, Luke suspicious in their eyes. And then by the time they realised, it was too late. And, and that's when the cover-up starts. Because they know they've screwed up and there's no going back and doing it again. You can't <laughs> uncontaminate the evidence. So, yeah. Um, Myra, Myra Henley, child killers used to get out once a week too. I don't know if that's if that's the case, Butterfly. Um, may well have been. I don't know. I, I can't remember if they had any sort of... I don't think they had any progression towards release, though. They were full-life prisoners, I believe. But don't quote me on that one. I'm just doing that from memory. Um, what have we got? I saw one there and it's gone off my screen. I don't know how to get it back. Uh, 
Marilyn Manson does know about Luke. Yes. Yes. Um, that is actually the case. <laughs> When will Luke be able to appeal again? Um, it's a difficult one. We can't, at the minute, we can't go straight back to the Court of Appeal because the way it's set up now is that you get your first appeal and then everything else goes to the SCCRC and they decide whether to refer it back to the Court of Appeal or not. So you don't just go straight back to um, the Appeal Court. You have to go through the Commission. Uh, the Commission's rate of referral especially for serious cases, is abysmal. It's absolutely rotten, rubbish. Um, tiny, tiny percentage of serious cases that go through the Commission actually get referred back to the Court of Appeal. Um, in England and Wales right now, they're doing a, a review of the Commission to point out all the flaws and all the difficulties with it. Uh, with nothing in Scotland to look at the, the commission. That's something I wanted to say. Um, the, this thing where we go to the Lord Advocate and they say it's not us, it's the police. We go to the police and say it's not us, it's somebody else. We go to the inspector and say it's not us, it's, it's the prison. We go to the prison and they say it's not us, it's somebody else. And on and on, they just bounce us. Boing, 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 boing. Right? Now, they're all part of the one system. Luke's case was a circumstantial case. So they took all these little bits and cobbled them together to make the narrative. What we are saying is all of these different authorities and organisations are all part of the chain as a result of that circumstantial case. So they then need to be linked together in the same way to go right because the court did that, or because the police did that, the court did this, because the court did that, the prison service did this, the prison service did this, so the inspector it needs to do that. Likewise with the, the samples, the police destroyed the evidence. They were told not to destroy it, and they destroyed it. Who do we go to? The police. Don't be ridiculous. As, as our criminal justice system as a whole, they are all responsible. And that's what they need to realise. And our MSPs ping it back with the, you know, um, oh, we can't talk about individual cases. The separation of powers between the parliament and, and the courts. I don't even need to say the right honourable Dorothy Bean for you to know what I'm talking about. How can she be the head of the justice system and a minister? And the idea that she, she does both jobs independently of each other and the two don't influence each other. She's a human being. It's as simple as that. She's a human being. Uh, how can I write to Luke? A Luke and said money, stamps. Police intelligence, two words that don't make sense. Not together, they don't. Um, you can't send stamps, Benjamin, in Scotland. Um, if you go on to email a prisoner, you can email Luke from there, or you can write to him, you can write a letter to him at shots. Um, for sending money, I think you have to do it through email a prisoner now as well. So um, I'll, I'll put the details in the link when this is finished. Oh, we've got a troll. Cool. Um, if Luke was caught destroying evidence, wouldn't he look guilty? So what does that make the police look like? Exactly, Constantine. Exactly. They, they went oh, to enormous lengths to try and suggest that Luke or his mother had destroyed evidence and found nothing. We have the proof in black and white that the police did destroy evidence. Okay? If, if they really, really wanted to use that against Luke to prove guilt, what do we say about the police destroying evidence? Especially the evidence they should not have destroyed. Uh, Oh, 
question missed. Is it true SK's blood was found on Jodie's bra? Yes. And I can't say any more about it. That's as much as I can say. I'm sorry. Uh, Scottish digger, I would book Tam the Bam out if I knew how to. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how to do it on a live. Sorry. Uh, do they still have the murder weapon? No. Well, if you mean the knife that was in the skip that could have been the murder weapon, no, it's gone. It's destroyed. What we did have were swabs from it, um, but they have now been moved to the, the Scottish Police Authority. And we can only pray that they're still there. Um <laughs> we know they know and I don't care for your nonsense Tam do one pet I, I don't know what Tam's saying because it's all going so quickly that I can't see it and um, don't don't let the trolls wind you up ignore them uh, the whole case has and will be swept under the carpet sadly not as long as we're here no, it's like they're going to have to, they'll be sweeping like like demons at this rate because Luke supporters are not going to let them sweep it under the carpet. It's not going to happen. We're not going away. Uh, okay, there's, there's a lot of talk about Jodie's brother. I am not getting involved in that. Okay, I'm not getting involved in it. Um, we know what we know. Factually, we know what we know, but that does not make someone a murderer. All I've ever said is there were people who should have been followed up who weren't, and that's as much as I'm prepared to say. This is what I mean about trying to keep things on that level of um, factual without spilling over into speculation and I understand that people have their opinions and they are entitled to those opinions but for me personally as far as I'm prepared to go is to say we know what we know and that should have been investigated. Uh, I, I don't know if you, I, <laughs> I own a fields worth, very good, I own a four breath tutor. Um, Show the facts, the DNA, let's shine a spotlight on it all. Iona, I would do that if I could. And the time is fast approaching where I probably will, so long as I'm not in Scotland when I do it. I don't think people believe or understand when I tell them I can't make that stuff public. And it's not just a case of, you know, I'd, I'd get a slap wrist for it. I, I really can't make it public. Um, should I be planning to spend any time not in the country, then that may become a consideration. Um, but for now, I can't. I'm sorry. I think there will be a film about this one day, Thomas Robertson. I think you might be right, and it might be closer than you think. That's all I'm going to say about that one. Day, 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 day. In time, the truth will be known to all. You cannot stop time. Correct. Correct. And the truth will eventually out. And I hope it's sooner rather than later. We've certainly got far more people talking now. We've got far more people Coming forward now, with information that we didn't have back then, uh, we also have scientists on board looking at stuff, going, "Well, uh, what about that?" And that's not right. So, so yeah, the truth's coming. I, I have no doubt about that. The truth's coming. Why didn't the police take any notice of the so-called confession, Sandra? Okay, so there are 
two claims about confessions. One is that a guy in prison confessed on the day, and I can't remember if it was the day which trial started or the day he was convicted, so I'd have to go back and check. Uh, there was a letter sent to Luke's solicitors years later saying that. Um, why was that never followed up? I don't know. What more can we do? We take it to the lawyers and say, go check this out. And we, we never got anywhere with it. Um, the other claimed confession is speculation. And it's not it's not something we can prove. It's not something we, we can, we have any evidence to back up that it happened. So that one, I just have to leave lying at the minute. Uh, Scottish Digger, when it, when this is done, I will have a look at how to do that, <laughs> to make moderators, but I don't know how to do it. Uh, yeah, the police lie and cover up. This, this is the difficulty, I think, is the police have had decades of getting away with this. They're very, very well practiced at it. Um, you just have to look at the, the wording of statements or the way statements are encouraged in particular directions to see that. Look at look at the way they speak in court, you know, all of that. Um, they, they've been getting away with it for so long that I think there was a an arrogance or an overconfidence that they would simply continue to get away with it. And that that explains these these constant knockbacks of we did a first class investigation, we did no you didn't. You know, anybody with a brain cell can see that. But that's the arrogance again. We're the police, we're telling you we were right, we're telling you we've got the right person, we're telling you we did a great investigation. Uh, yeah, we now have the information in front of us that says you didn't. But what can you do except except keep exposing them? Um, we have to have more peaceful protests, but not silent this time. The silence is over. Absolutely, Alison, wrong, wrongful conviction land. Absolutely. Um, we, we've turned out and we're being very respectful. I am not talking about rioting in the streets. But, yeah, time to make a bit more noise, I think. Um Emma, there's only so long the lid can be kept on things before it pops off and it's only time that will tell. I think the lid is off. I think the lid is off and it's just going to keep pouring out now. Um, is there a gagging order on the British media reporting certain stuff? Um I don't know if there's a gagging order, but there seems to be a, a general um, agreement amongst them not to print any of the stuff that we uncover, not to make public, ma not to make the public aware of like all the all the anomalies and, and failings and everything else. Hence, articles like today's Sun, which are just absolute bull, and and they just keep making it up. And Corinne said right from the start, if they wanted a sensational story, if they really wanted a sensational story, all they had to do was look at what they did to the Mitchell family. That would have been a massively sensational story. But that's not the kind of sensation they want, is it? Unfortunately. <laughs> the lid is off and it's smashed to bits, yeah. Uh, Elmo, is it, hi Bullseye, is there any way to get a hold of the profile the police got from the Jolly to America? Can someone from America get it under freedom of information? We tried that already and it turns out that because it was um, Lothian and Borders Police that requested it, it belongs to them as, as far as the FBI are concerned. So they'd need it, Lothian and Borders Police to release it in its entirety without redacting it. The problem with that is Lothian and Borders Police requested it on behalf of the people of Scotland because the police 
by the pres presumed consent of the people of Scotland. So really, it belongs to all of us, not to Lothian and Borders Police, who no longer exist. So it would be Police Scotland. Um, we have a similar thing with um, the expert who did the analysis of the insect eggs in Jodie's nostrils. And when we tried to get that, the expert said, oh, it was it was requested by the Crown. You'd have to get, I'd have to get their permission to release it. Well, that's that's not supposed to be the case because our experts are supposed to give their evidence to the court without reference to either side. They're supposed to be completely independent. So, so there's two things that we should have a right to. And they just keep going, oh no, it belongs to him, it belongs to him. No, it doesn't, it belongs to us. It belongs to us. And even if we can't get it in the public domain, for his legal team, for those fighting to get this case overturned, they should be released. But once again, stonewalling every turn. Uh, Tam, I don't know what you're on about, but anything to do with next door to me, you better back off, mate. You better back off. Uh, does Scott Forbes still work on the case with you, Sandra? Yes or no? Yes, he does. He does. Um, we quite often were off doing different things independently of each other, but Scott still, I still speak to him two, three times a week. Um, just depending on what we're doing. Sandra, are you using iPad? No. Why do you ask? Were you going to tell me how to do it? How to get, how to get rid of people? No, I'm, I'm just on my laptop. Anyway, guys, we're, we're almost, we're almost done here. Um, Oh, now we're talking about guns under cars. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what we're talking about now. So, yeah, um, I'm probably going to call it at that. Thank you, Scottish Digger. Email me and <laughs> I'll try and make some sense of it for next time. Sorry, I'm just a rubbish with tech. Um, Educate the uneducated, absolutely. Now that's one of the things that, that we've been working on in, in the last week and that's somewhere where the Buy Me A Coffee funding is gonna be really useful. Um, putting together info packs that can be handed out to people, like some people said they're just gonna set up little stalls and, and chat to people walking past and give them info packs, info packs so that they can find out more about the case, links to where they can come online and see all the stuff and everything. Um, and, and it's about education, it's about showing people how the system works, what happens when it goes wrong, and, and what they can do to help change that. Uh, I don't know what that's about. <laughs> Ashley, just search how to make someone a mod. You have no idea how proud I am of actually being able to read these <laughs> these comments at the same time as doing a live. <laughs> Give me something else to do and I'll go horribly wrong. Um, what about the current review of the justice system going through this parallel at the moment? Any use to raise awareness of Luke's case? Um, looking at that this week, uh, I don't know who that was, uh, as part of being offline, looking at all the different possibilities and, and people that we can try to address uh, as means of taking things forward. Most most of the time we get that it's an individual case, but I'm now looking at teasing that out to, this is not just this case. This is a problem with the justice system here, problem with the justice system here, problem with the justice system here. Um, and hopefully that will stop them knocking it back straight away as being an individual case. Um, Okay, so, so we're, we're on about time again. Uh, I hope you're looking after yourself too, Sandra. Yes, yes, just trying to 
one of the reasons for coming offline is is it's getting it was getting to the stage where I was doing stupid hours again. So I need to kind of take a step back and just work on what I really, really need to work on right now. Um until until we get that lot done. Um corruption is rife. It absolutely is. Um I think it I think it's shocking. A lot of people are really shocked at how bad it actually is. And and so blatant, you know, when we're we're put we're calling them out on it and they're going, huh? Like, don't care. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, Benjamin, I will put out uh, I'll put up if, if you come back in half an hour's time, I'll put it in the the description at the bottom of this. I, it's just I can't I can't do it at the same time as doing all this. But, but if you give me half an hour after the end of this, I'll put that information in the description box underneath. Should have had it there before. Sorry. Need to keep this going, people. Shout loud. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what this is all about. Um, we, we need to be shouting louder and we need more of us shouting louder than we currently are. But I have no doubt with all this support, yeah. Yeah, well, they, they have to back down eventually. Um, okay. Is buy you a coffee on continuous? Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's sitting there in the background. If anybody, if anybody wants to buy me a coffee at any point, it will just be sitting there. Um, and like I said, I, I've had to explain to a few people, we had fun, <coughs> we've had fun, try that in English, we've tried to have fundraisers before um, for various things. We had a fundraiser for Corrine that raised over £17,000. Somebody complained that the money was for loot boom taken down. Uh, another time we were trying to raise um, funds for a particular part of the case was reported as raising funds for a convicted person, boom, taken down. So buy me a coffee, so that people understand, buy me a coffee is not raising funds for Luke, all right? It raises funds to allow me to do the work I do. And if that work happens to involve individual cases, well, that might just be the case. But it's still funding my work and not a convicted person. It's the only way we could do it, guys. Uh, what have we got here? No, I don't know. I think we're... I think we're done now. Heather, I hope your food grown is going well. Yes, it is. Um, as, a, as a little um, respite from this, I've started growing food, vegetables in my garden, which is really nice. I really enjoy it. And it was quite interesting that, that you know, Luke was doing the gardens and I was doing the garden. So a lot of our conversations were about gardening. <laughs> OK, I'm going to go. Um, thank you again for all your time this afternoon, this evening. Uh, it, it's amazing that you keep coming in on a Sunday evening. Um, I'm sure you've all you've all got lots of things that you could be you could be doing, but you keep coming in, you keep showing your support, and it, it's absolutely incredible. Thank you, thank you so much. And I will tell Luke when I see him, hopefully in person later this week. Um, I'll update on that if it goes ahead. Uh, so yeah. Um, Yep. So we're done. All right, guys. Thanks so much for coming in again. And uh, I won't be on for a couple of weeks, um, like I said, because I've got quite a lot to try and get through. Um, but I'll I'll put something out when I'm going to be back on and I will keep you updated with any developments via the groups. All right. OK, enjoy the rest of your Sunday and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Okay.